Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Nick Drinks. We have a special episode today. We have my friend Mark Mulnex, and he is the sales and marketing director for Prestige Decanters. Nick Drinks. How are you and Mark? I'm doing well, how are you today? Very good. So you guys were very gracious to send me this uh, decanter to test out and experiment at the, uh, the Nick Drinks studios. Why don't you talk a little bit just about Prestige Decanters? What do they do? So Prestige Decanters, we're based in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, we specialize, well, we originally started specializing in, in custom unique decanters, personalized decanters. We recently have started to expand into other barware accessories, but uh, for today's conversation, obviously we're talking about decanters. Um, it's pretty cool. All of our wood bases are handmade in Kentucky of oak. Um, our, our glass itself is hand blown, it's lead free. It's a barium oxide. Um, so it's super resilient uh, and you don't have to worry about lead getting in your spirits. And so that's interesting. So when you talk about kind of the, the quality of the, the glass, does that make it a crystal or is that kind of the difference between like glass and crystal? Well, it's crystals different, but okay. um, you know, if you talk about crystal in the old days, if you will, there's a lot of lead in it. And, cool. and you know, today, if you Google it and whatnot, you can learn a lot about it, but um, no, it's not crystal for us. It's a borosilic glass. So it's super resistant to temperature changes. Um, it, it's kind of the latest and greatest, if you will. Very cool. Well, so let, let's talk a little bit about decanters, because I feel like decanters might have a bad rap. It's almost like something you see in your grandma's house. And when you get this beautiful artwork here, it's totally different than your expectations. So like, like what is a decanter? Yeah, so uh, decanters go back thousands of years. The original decanters were clay pots for wine. Um, the history of glass decanters goes back uh, what, 5000 BC. Um, I think they were first used in Syria. Um, but it wasn't really until like the Roman Empire that decanters started to become common. Um, and, and during the Renaissance, that's kind of the long version of the, the wine decanter, if you will which is, you know, obviously much different than a whiskey decanter um, and what you're trying to accomplish with it. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the 18th century, basically the British wineries kind of incorporated stock wine decanters to reduce the amount of oxygen. So that's kind of like the transformation of decanters, but it was historically based around wine. Um, and, you know, the, obviously the decanter you have there is, it can be used for wine, but it's specifically whiskey. Um, you know, we have airtight stoppers. Um, we already talked a little bit about the glass and whatnot. So, you know, today decanters, I think if you look at it in two categories, you have the wine decanters and you're trying to accomplish a totally different thing, right? Um, let, the, let the wine breathe um, or filter out um, as you pour in. Um, so, but whiskey is different, you know? If you think about whiskey, you can put your favorite spirit. Um, it's great at parties. It's, it's a great accent piece to your home bar. Um, it's show your personality. Um, a lot of them are personalized or can be personalized. So, you know, from a gift standpoint and whatnot. Um, and, and I think that's where today, where we're at with it. I mean, we have over got a hundred plus different decanters. And of course we have like the engraved glass ones and, and that, but then you get into the theme decanters. And, and that's what I think, you know, for us um, as a company, it's pretty neat about us. And, and that's what we're seeing in the market. Um, for example, you know, we're licensed with the military. So we have the Army, Navy, Air Force, U.S. Marine Corps. Um, and then we all have different themes, like nautical themes, ships in the bottle, the diamond that you see there, the Cullinan. Um, and then you get into sports as well. You know, we have a fantasy trophy, football decanter, um, baseball glasses, golf decanters. So it's, it's really... It's really about personality and, and just, you know, having fun with being a whiskey connoisseur. So it's interesting that you brought up wine because specifically when you look at like decanting wine, you know, you're trying to mellow out some of those tannins, add some oxygen to the wine. When we're specifically talking about whiskey, is that kind of where you're going with this? Like what is kind of the point of decanting whiskey? Well, I mean, decanting whiskey, it's, it's it, it's, you're not really like trying to filter out anything, number one, because it's, it's different than wine. Um, you know, it, it, for us, uh, we think it's like a show, you know, it, it's, 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 it's cool to be unique. And so if you're drinking a favorite spirit, and we all do, right, and you have bottles in your bar and whatnot, um, mix it up a little bit, right? Um, I take these decanters around sometimes to local restaurants and whatnot occasionally, people I know, and just 
kind of just set it up there, you know, without even saying anything. And, and you get the same reaction every time. Wow, what is that, right? So, you know, for whiskey, why would you do it? And like, why would you decant it? I mean, there's not like a definitive purpose like there would be with wine to filter out, um, you know, whiskey has less tannins. Um, so there's definitely a less, less of a chance of a flavor change. And, and I think when you look at kind of personalization, I think that's where this kind of plays in for me. Um, you look at, there's, there's only so many whiskeys that are made. I, I feel like sometimes you can get some customization with barrel picks or very tight allocations. But, you know, maybe you have a house whiskey that you always drink, and this would be a great way to kind of differentiate it. You know, maybe it's like a, like a Buffalo Trace. You know, that bottle is kind of very iconic, but, you know, everyone knows it's Buffalo Trace. Kind of putting it in this decanter gives you that personal flair for it. And as Mark kind of talks about the customization, you can do uh, laser etching on the glass. Is that correct? Uh, not on, on that line, on the globe lines and the diamonds, but we do have, you know, a square, standard square line that we do do in grading. Okay. But as so, far as the personalization on that line, what we do is we put like a personalized nameplate that goes on the base of the wood. Oh, that's very, very cool. Well, and you did talk about the globe and I see the globe hiding in the background of your shot. I want to talk about that because that is such a unique bottle. Obviously the diamond is cool and I thought this represented me, but talk a little bit about the globe behind you. Yeah, so the globe's pretty neat. I mean, we have, if you look at our, our website and, and you're looking at our products, the globe, we have so many different types of globes. Um, for example, inside of the globe itself, we have different themes. So if you're talking like the US Air Force emblem or the US Marine Corps, um, that's actually floating in the middle of the globe. So it's inside, it's pretty cool. Um, it looks even cooler when you fill it up, you know? And uh, for us, it's, it's, it's about personality and, and like you said, being original. So if you have your favorite spirit, whatever you're drinking, favorite whiskey, um, I personally think a decanter looks better sitting out on a home bar than a bottle, you know? Um, but it's also an accent piece too. Um, for example, you could, you could even give it as a gift for real estate agents for closing gifts, for example, right? It's personalized, put your logo, your name on it, send it as a gift. That's going to be sitting out in the home, right? People, it's going to be the wow factor. Wow, what is that? You have a, a party or a dinner party um, and people are going to talk about it and they're going to ask about it. So it's also a conversation piece at your home. And I think Kenny, when you talk about having it out on like a bar cart or a bar, and, um, you know, some people like having those brand labels out, but other people don't. And this is a very clean approach. Um, maybe you're trying to be very aggressive with the, the styling in your home. This is a little more neutral than like a big, you know, Smirnoff label or you know, something like that. Uh, so I think that does have a nice part to it that you're making something very clean and elegant to put really on any bar. Um, yeah, and if you think about home bars, um, I have a bar that is open. I mean, I have bottles stacked in the corner of the bar. It's custom built. But a lot of home bars, you know, are closed cabinets, right? Uh, maybe down below or whatnot. So like you said, you know, if you have your favorite spirit, why keep opening the cabinet doors and pulling the bottle out and so on when you can just walk up, take the airtight stopper off, you know, pour yourself a drink and set it back down and it looks good and, and you don't have to fumble through the, the home bar either. So talk a little bit about the couple of different attributes of uh, a decanter. There's a couple of different things to look at. Uh, especially when you're shopping, when you're looking at what's available on your website, what are maybe some of the, the seven or eight points that you guys are looking at? Yeah, I mean, you get into like the decanter shape, you know, as you see there, you have a diamond. So I think that kind of goes into, from the functionality standpoint, it, it's not going to do anything different to the whiskey. It's, it's your personality, what you want, what you'd like to display, right? Um, ease of pour. Uh, so we do have, for example, that one's a top pour stopper, right? Um, but we also have some that are, are barrel whiskey. So they're sitting on a, a wood base and they have an actual pour spout, um, stainless steel pour spout. So it's a little different, you know, you could slide your cup underneath it, twist the pour spout and, and go on. So that's, that's something to consider. And then of course, if you get into wine decanters, you know, the, that, that matters as well, right? The length of the stem and design. So um, airtight seal, super important. Um, you'll see some some decanters out there that actually have either like a plastic stopper um, or potentially cork. Um, ours are glass, so it's actually like a sandblasted glass, right? Uh, so it's airtight seal. You can always add a little bit of silicone to any decanter. So if you did happen to buy one, 
and you're thinking about buying one, you know, Prestige, um, and you want to salvage it a little longer, you can always put a little bit of uh, silicone on there. Um, but you won't need that with ours. And when you talk about the seal, you know, this goes back to like my, my days in chemistry class, where you'd have those nice ground glass fittings that would, uh, you know, really be a nice tight fit. So you know that really gas can't get out of there. And so that's a, that's a nice feature of that. 100%. That's what it's about. Exactly. Um, cool. So let's talk a little bit about, uh, we talked about the material. When you're kind of looking at a price range for what's available on your site, kind of talk in what range are we in? Yeah. So, I mean, we have decanters. When you get into the theme decanters that start at the $80 range and go up to 120 um, If you get into like a fantasy football trophy, which is pretty cool because obviously it's, you can, you can share it every year and there's actually places where you can put the winner's nameplate on it. You know, it's a little larger, so it, it costs a little more. Um, and then we have some that are up in like that 140 range, the 160. But generally speaking, you know, in that 100 to 120 range is a good market, we think, for a, a, a good decanter. Um, you know, are there less expensive choices in the market? There always are. Of course there are. Um, but you also kind of get what you pay for. Um, and that goes into the, you know, back of the company as well. And the back, we back our product. And for every decanter sold, we plant a tree. Um, that's kind of a, something else we do for philanthropy as well. Um, and in our shop in Louisville, Kentucky is where all the, the oak bases are made, um, handmade. So it's pretty neat. So if you also think of the incredible heritage that Louisville has for uh, really the bourbon industry and spirits making in general, how did you guys get started in that, that region? Is it kind of related to the, the bourbon industry or was it just by happenstance? Uh, yes, the, the, um, the owner of Prestige, Addison, uh, is from there. So okay. he was born and raised there, right in Louisville, whiskey country. And, uh, you know, the short story behind how the company got started was he was shopping for a gift for his father. And he really wasn't satisfied with the decanters he was finding online. And just frankly just said, you know what, I'm going to make a better one. I'm going to do something different. And here we are. It's the American way. <laughs> right? All right. So we got kind of a funky shape on here. And when I think of like hygiene, um, is there any recommendations you would give for cleaning this or, or tips to make sure that in between whiskeys, we're, we're keeping this uh, sanitary? Sure. It's a good point. You know, you always want to worry about residuals if you are changing spirits, for example. Um, you know, if you're going to use the same one, you don't necessarily have to clean it every time. It's more of a I would say a personal thing, um, but yes, we do. Uh, you, you do want to clean your decanter. Um, you want to get rid of all the additional residuals from what you had in there previously. Um, we do have a cleaning kit. It's pretty simple. You know, it comes with a stainless steel funnel to make it easy. Uh, you know, Thirty grams of a cleaning powder. Um, it's you know basically so sodium blend of a, of a, a powder and then a powder scoop as well. And so it's pretty easy. You just mix that with water. You know, shake it around, let it sit a little bit, gently warm water, and, uh, you know, you're good to go. And I think any of my friends out there who are into either um, wine making or beer making are going to be pretty, uh, pretty in tune to those uh, sanitation and cleaning procedures. Would you recommend like a, like a bottle brush for this? Yeah, I mean, you could, sure. And I think, you know, if you're using it for wine, because, you know, obviously we talked a lot about whiskey, but you can, of course, put wine in it as well. I mean, as we all know, um, you typically consume, want to consume wine much faster. But, um, you know, it, it's, that's, that would be a scenario that I think the cleaning would be much more uh, embraced, if you will. Um, okay. But, yeah, I mean, it's, it's alcohol, you know. So if you're using the same spirit and it's your favorite spirit, I wouldn't worry about cleaning it every time. I think it's more of a preference, but uh, at least I don't. Um, but for sure, just like cleaning your house or anything else, you know, sometimes you might kind of look at something like, yeah, probably need to, the next round, throw some salt in one there. So. so that's interesting. That leads into the other video that we did, which you can find up here, is that we actually made it an infinity bottle. And this is something that I've been wanting to test for a long time. And kind of the theory of the infinity bottle, which you can learn more about in my other video, is at, you're adding a little bit of each whiskey that's left in uh, the bottles that you've completed to kind of make your own custom blend. And um, that's something that I got excited about the decanter. And uh, you can find out more when we tasted this on that other video. But um, no, Mark, you've done a great job of being very neutral 
talking about the decanter industry and not kind of you know tooting your own horn. Give us the pitch for Prestige. Why should people buy a decanter for you? Well, I mean, I think if you look at our story and, and what we've talked about today and about how the company was founded, you know, Addison founded the company basically on, on passion and seeing a, a gap in the market. He wanted to make a better solution. And, and that's what we've done, a better product, um, high quality, hand blown, handmade bases in Kentucky. Um, and then you talk about customer service. Um, you know, we do free shipping for orders over $50. Um, but you get into it, it, glass, the, the packaging is very expensive, just to, to say that, meaning it's going to arrive to you in good shape. And if you, you know, if you open that up and, you know, when you do receive it to camp, you'll see it's sandwiched in, it's kind of floating in the air inside of that box. So we rarely have breakage, but of course it's glass and it does happen. Um, we're very quick. We we're very out. respond. We don't give a lot of hassle. Take a picture, send it to, to us. You'll have a decanter out to you within the day, 24 hours. And that's something else I, um, we do ship within 24 hours, and that's even on the personalization. Um, and so being in Louisville, Kentucky, in the United States, we can get really anywhere between two to three days. Um, definitely for gifts, if you want to talk about what else we do, and we have groomsmen's gifts, we have corporate gift programs, we have a real estate agent um, gifting closing gift program. So, for example, agents can sign up and, and send away right throughout the year, and they actually get a little bit of a discount and they get free personalization. Um, so, that's something different that I think we do that other companies don't do. Same thing with the corporate gifts. Um, you know, for example, the diamond decanter. I mean, there's so many sales programs out there that have the Diamond Club award winner. You know, Remax is an example, the real estate, um, you know, that's what theirs is called. So that makes an excellent corporate award, sales award, um, whether it's President's Club or Diamond Club. That's, that would be my choice as a sales manager for, for gifting to, you know, my winners. Um, yeah, but at the end of the day, passion's behind it. Um, we're in it to win it. You know, we're in it for the right reason. And we actually have over 100 different decanters now. We, we, in about three weeks, we're going to have another about 50 or 60 new decanter lines coming out. And that's kind of what we're going to continue to expand on. Um, and then we also recently launched Prestige House, prestigehouse.com. And, and that's kind of where we're segway, segueing into the personalized wood bar trays and coasters and more bar accessories. Um, and, you know, obviously, it's the same company. Um, this is just more for us from a branding standpoint. Prestige decanters is what we're going to run with with the decanters and, uh, you know, tried and true. I love it. Mark, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, if people do want to find more about Prestige decanters, where can they go? www.prestigehouse.com. Excellent. Prestigedecanters.com works as well. So either one. <laughs> Mark, thank you so much. And to all of you out there, thank you so much for watching Nick Rinks. You can find more of us at nickrinks.com, youtube.com slash nickrinks, and nickrinks all, nickrinks.com all spelled out. Thanks so much. Until next time. Cheers. Thanks, guys.